I'm Jonas van Bogaert, uh, Digital Strategy Lead at Aliander and also the Open Source Office Lead for, for Aliander's Open Source Program Office. And I'm here today with Nico. Yeah, and I'm Open Source Ambassador at the Open Source Program Office of Aliander and also acting as a CICD Specialist. Yeah. And for those who are not familiar with Aliander, let me give you a short overview of who Aliander is. Aliander is the largest distribution system operator in the Netherlands and we develop and manage energy networks. We are nearly responsible for 6 million customer connections. We manage over nearly 90,000 kilometers of electricity grid and over 40,000 kilometers of gas grid. And as Aliander, it's our key task to make sure Dutch households and companies stay warm and have access to energy at all times. And today, in specific, we want to tell you more about the challenges that en the energy transition poses on companies like Aliander. And how open source projects like OpenStaff, the Power Grid model, and a Shapeshifter help Aliander to tackle these challenges. Also, we will provide you a short overview of Lean's Foundation Energy, the open source foundation for the power system sector. And hopefully, that we'll also have some time at the end for some questions and discussions. So what challenges are distribution system operators like Aliander facing today? In 10 years time, we see that the way we live, work and travel won't be the same. And it's very much necessary since fossil fuels are becoming more scarce and have a grown impact on our environment. However, luckily, we see that new initiatives are emerging around the world to conserve energy and make it more sustainable. Especially in the Netherlands, we see that the way we generate, distribute and use energy is changing very rapidly. I would see that fossil fuel power stations are closing down in Netherlands to in order to reduce CO2 emissions. And we see a really strong increase in the use of solar panels, wind energy, and also the emerge of uh, electric cars and e-mobility. And this creates major challenges for sy distribution system operators like Alien to support this transition. The Netherlands, for example, as nowadays one of the most reliable electricity grids in the world. However, this grid back in the day is not designed for the rapid developments that are happening today. We see, especially in the Netherlands, that the demand for electricity is growing so fast that it's driving the grid to its limits. There are already places in our grid that we unfortunately have to say no to new business consumers or business consumers that want to expand their businesses and our need in electric power. And that's for a huge problem for us as a company and also for these customers. Even though we as Aliend have significantly increased our investment in expanding the grid in the last few years. And we see that it requires uh, new investments and new smart solutions, especially in digitalization, to better use the capacity that's currently available in the grid. And one of these smart solutions we as Aliander are investing in, and I would like to talk about today, is the steering of supply and demand when there's a risk that the maximum grid capacity is reached. And this can be due to, for example, a sunny day in summer, where there's a lot of sun and solar energy and a lot of wind and wind energy, but maybe only a little demand. Or in a period in winter, where there's too much demand, think of a day uh, where it's very cold, but there's nearly no sun or wind production at, this, at that time. And this steering of supply and demand is also often referred to as congestion management. And congestion management can be in the form of direct control, such as the curtailment of the excess of renewable energy, or in the form of a market-based mechanism, where incentives are used to intensify grid parties to adjust their supply or demand. And when we as Aliander are able to active manage congestion, we will create an electricity grid that has more room for new businesses, consumers, and business consumers that want to expand their business and our need of extra electric power. And to perform active congestion management, new digital capabilities and solutions are required. And open source plays a very important role here. We see that open source software 
at companies like Allianz that can no longer be ignored. If you take studies from Gartner, you see that open source software is used in mission critical environments by more than 95% of the organization worldwide. And honestly, I speak to a lot of companies in this situation. I still have to find those 5% who don't. And many innovative technologies for building cloud native or digital applications are also open source. And I personally really believe that digitalization in today's world without open source software is really impossible. For example, it's really hard to imagine a modern IT stack today without open source software. I would like to challenge you to raise your hands if not at least one of these applications is used in your organization as well. So what makes open source software particularly interesting for companies like Aliena? One, we see that open source software tends to lead to more stable software. Two, we see that open source software also allows for more incremental innovation with the limited budget you have. And three, and maybe even most importantly, we see open source software enables the power of the crowd. Innovation tends to come more often from outside your organization than inside your organization. And this is also true what we see at Aliendo. We see that at Aliendo we are using more and more open source software. We are participating in more and more open source projects. And we also continue to open source internal projects, which is also of interest for a broader scope and broader parties. And today, we would like to focus in particular on the LF Energy Project's OpenStep, the Power Grid Model, and Shapeshifter, and share with you how these three projects help building new digital capabilities for congestion management and help Aliander to integrate more renewables in the electricity grid. As I mentioned before, the goal of active congestion management is to steer supply and demand in periods when there is a risk that the maximum grid capacity is reached. This is to better use the capacity that's available on the grid and to create room for the new businesses and businesses that want to expand their business and are in need of electric power. So let's get started with our open step. For anticipating local congestion, it's essential that we as Aliander are able to forecast the load on the electricity grid for the next hours to days. And we are specifically interested to forecasting the load on the grid for the next 24 hours or 48 hours. Because we need to know what the load on the grid will be so we can determine if there's a risk that the maximum grid capacity is reached. And it's also important for us that we know this in advance so there's still sufficient time to take action if there is a potential risk that that maximum grid capacity will be reached. And here the OpenStep project comes to play. OpenStep provides a software for forecasting the load and generation of electricity on the electricity grid for the upcoming hours and days. And OpenStep uses smart algorithms and specific machine learning models to produce forecasts based on measurements, weather forecasts, pricing on the energy market, and many other important features. And this makes it a really an important building block for active congestion management at Allianz. And besides active congestion management, OpenStep is also an important enabler for us for grid safety analysis and determine grid loss. So OpenStep itself is a Python package which you can use to make short-term forecasts for the energy sector. So how does OpenStep work? OpenStep provides a fully automated machine learning pipeline which creates and codify, creates energy forecasts for the energy sector. And we're not, I'm not familiar with machine learning pipelines, let me give you a short overview. A machine learning pipeline is a way to codify and automate the workflow it takes to produce and deploy a machine learning model. And machine learning pipelines consist of multiple steps that do everything from data extraction of uh, pre-processing to model training and to deployment. And OpenStep in specific encapsulates all the learned best practices of producing machine learning models for load forecast on the electricity grid. And also importantly, allows users to use this pipeline at scale. As input, OpenStep can use 
data sets from multiple data sources. And it is very easy to add new data sets or new sources depending on your needs. Key input data for Aliendra, for example, are historical loads and generation measurements, weather data, and data from energy markets. Next, OpenStep performs validation on this input data and combines the historical loads and generation measurements with external predictors like weather data and the market prices. This data is then used to train a model for each, for each location where we do forecast. And here, in principle, any SkySkit computable machine learning that can be used. The current model that we use at Aliander is the extreme gradient boosting algorithm. So, especially at Aliander, we use to make forecasts at substation level. And every substation has its own unique model, trade model. This because in some substation, the influence of wind speed has a huge influence on, on the load of that substation. Due to that, there is a lot of wind production behind that substation. But for example, in other substation, this can be different. There's, for example, a lot of solar production in that area. And then you see that uh, factors such as radiation has a way larger input. Our forecast at Eliander are renewed every 50 minutes. But it also depends on your use case, what's an optimal uh, time. Also, the forecasts we make are automatically continuously evaluated. And when we see that the forecast at a specific location underperforms, then the underlying model will be retrained or re-optimized. And of course, in the post-pressing step, we make also sure that the trained models and the forecasts are made available through APIs for other systems to be used. give this is a little bit more imagination. I took this image on this slide. And here you see one of the forecasts that's performed for one of Aliana substations. And what you see in this substation in particular is that we make forecasts for different time horizons. For example, one hour ahead, four hours ahead, 24 hours ahead, and more. Also, as you look closely, you can see that there's a lot of times when the energy production behind the substation is negative, which means that there's more energy produced in that area than consumed. And that's why that's also really true for this substation, because this is an area where there's a lot of wind production behind this substation. In addition, OpenStep also provides forecasts for the amount of solar and wind energy generated. And since solar energy and particular wind energy have the greatest uncertainty, it really helps to have insight in the contribution of these components to the total load. And as already mentioned, OpenStep by itself is just a Python package and there are multiple ways to implement OpenStep in your organization or in your application. In this slide, which I will go into detail, gives you an example of an reference implementation for OpenStep, where open source software technology and standards are used in a microservice organized architecture for, that is optimized for cloud deployment. Although Aliander is still the largest contributor of OpenStep project, the community has become more diverse in the last few years. For example, RT, the French uh, transmission system operator, and also member of Linux Foundation Energy, started also contributing to OpenSAP and are currently replacing their legacy-based forecasting solution based on the solution on OpenSAP. Another contribution by OpenSAP is made to the, by the Aachen University who implemented the support for the Prolog model. And Prolog is an other holistic load forecasting model that can be used to forecast the load on the electricity grid. And with Prolog included, OpenSAP use, supports multiple models and it's up to the user to choose which model best fits your needs. And we would love to see the OpenStep community grow further. So if any one of you is interested in particular in this project, I recommend you to check out the OpenStep website or dive into the OpenStep GitHub community where you can get started with OpenStep. 
And this brings us to the end of the open step introduction. And now it's time to introduce our second project, the PowerGrid model. And here I would like to give over to Nika. Yeah, thank you, Jonas. Um, yeah, that brings us to PowerGrid model and how that ties onto the data that we get from OpenStep. And um, well, PowerGrid model is a, a library, also a Python library, you can use for power system analysis. Basically, doing calculations on the grid. I'm talking electricity grid here. Um, and it uses uh, the OpenStep data as input, together with characteristics of the grid, to come to a conclusion about uh, what actually is the impact of, uh, of the predictions. So if we go back to the, um, uh, the, the, the use case we have at hand, active congestion management, we have the forecast of open staff, right? We see what's coming and we want to determine if this is good or bad or if we need to do something in any way. And then we use PowerGrid model for power system analysis to evaluate that. We take the data um, and, and see if it's an issue or what could be uh, an improvement. And uh, mainly, a power grid model is, uh, is used in this case for like a, a steady state uh, calculation, but it also uh, is used far widely uh, using different calculation methods that have become uh, part of the, of the software. Um, Jonas already introduced you about the scenarios, like maybe having wind uh, or solar in a day. Um, one of the ways you can uh, deal with, uh, say, curtailment is to maybe prevent a wind farm from producing too much, right? They just turn the, the wind turbines out of the wind. That could be a way to mitigate congestion. And first you need to determine uh, if there is an issue and in what way. Now, PowerGrid model was started at Aleander. We were needing a calculation engine that was fast, that was easy to integrate. And in the meantime, it has become a fundamental building block of everything we do as a distribution system operator. Because it's not just this scenario, but oftentimes you find yourself in any analysis needing a bit of calculation on the grid. Because there's a lot of things that affect the network. So we have it in a lot of uh, uh, ideas like here, grid planning, automatic network design, like we trying to come up with new parts of the network monitoring of where uh, the, the asset allocation is happening and now here uh, active congestion management and some of these include a human in the loop but a lot of them don't so it's really focused on automation now a traditional workflow of power system analysis say in the past uh, is a more manual step Ever since we've been putting cables in the ground or power poles, there have been people running calculations, first by hand, then uh, with calculators perhaps, and then with uh, desktop software applications. So typically uh, a grid architect would check out uh, a, a grid representation and do the calculations and come up to some conclusions and um, that will end up somewhere and the action will be taken. But this is not an option if we do active congestion management. Like Jonas said, every five minutes we have to come up with an analysis, oftentimes involving multiple calculations. So the human needs to get out of the loop. And so we're moving to a world where we take something from a database out to a database or a queue or whatever uh, other system, right? In, data in, data out. And the integration is really important. And so we need models that are fit for that. Um, and so why should you use PowerGrid model as you're moving to this more integrated use case? Well, let me tell you, uh, these are some of the highlights of PowerGrid model, where its strengths lie. So it has multiple power system calculations functionalities, probably the, the most typical ones you were uh, expecting. Also, this linear method that we have proven scientifically that it's within the error bounds that we expect from traditional methods like newson Repson. Uh, so it's good enough, but it's a giant speed booster. We also can do low voltage grid where we have uh, different loads on the different uh, feeders of three voltage systems. And as I said, it's a high, uh, high performance implementation in, in C++. It's really used the, the best uh, performance of, of the CPU it's running on. It has a Python API that's well tested to all these use cases and uh, cross-platform. It's not focused on a, on a UI, but I, I'll get back to that uh, afterwards with the integration. And so um, this is more an overview of a typical scenario where we take the predictions um, uh, sort of on uh, below 
right? We have assume load, we have maybe measurements coming in depending on the use case. We have the topology of the grid, which also changes over time, so it's an added complexity, right? There might be uh, a one line might be out for maintenance. The topology changes over time. And we have asset information. What type of cables are there? What transformers? How does that um, uh, change the impedance and the calculations? All this is part of PowerGrid model, and all the data interaction is uh, according to uh, various open standards. And we can determine also if there's an, uh, an issue. So uh, in this case, there's an example calculation. It might be an overload situation, but also you can think of uh, voltages, like there's an overvoltage, the voltage with all the solar coming in, the voltages rise, and you get an, uh, a voltage level that's out of code. That's also a, you, something you have to account for. Now, the PowerGrid community is also growing. Uh, I think, uh, like OpenStaff, we're the main contributor at Aliander. But we have a good uh, buy-in now from other grid operators and universities that are using it and, and testing it out to see if it's adding value to them. And through that discussion and our meetups, uh, we get a lot of insight in where it needs to go next, how we can improve it, and also how we can integrate it with other solutions. For example, you see the Panda Power, which is another great uh, solution in this space, um, which covers a more a different use case, right? A lot of more models, uh, more modeling, where we have a specific need for integration and, and speed. Uh, but we work together, and we have integrated Power Grid model in Panda Power. And the same for GridCal, it's a, a UI, where you can use a Power Grid model as a, a calculation engine. So we're really looking uh, to work together with other organizations, other open source projects. Now, if you want to know more about PowerGrid model, as said, it's an active community with great meetups. This is the team. You can reach them out on, uh, on GitHub as well, uh, mail them. And um, we've done webinars as well for international um, attendees. There might be some in the future, so please just reach out, and maybe we can even set up something special for that. Now, we have done the analysis. But what do we do with that? Because knowing there's an issue is not enough. <laughs> you actually need to act on it. And that brings us to another project, a Shapeshifter. Shapeshifter has an origin by the Universal Smart Energy Framework, USAF, which is a great encompassing um, uh, well, document framework, like how should the energy market incorporating fl flexibility look like? A lot of uh, great minds came together to come up with standards, with suggestions. And one part of that was the Universal Flex Trading Protocol, UFTP, designed to enable the trading of uh, flexibility, separate from other energy trading. This got put under the Linux Foundation Energy and is now called Shapeshifter. And it's really about enabling trading of uh, flexibility to mitigate issues like congestion. So in the overview we had of active congestion management, we now have done an analysis we want to know uh, there is an issue, we know there is an issue, and we want to address it some way, and we can do that through Shapeshifter. I'll explain why, or what a how. Um, this is one of the diagrams that's from Shapeshifter. Shapeshifter is pretty much a really a, a standard, a protocol, a way of working with a couple of libraries in Java and Python to enable you to implement this in your own uh, solution. Uh, so it's not like this encompassing application, there might be one in the future, but not at the moment. Um, the idea is that for flexibility, we can use the flexibility that is already there. On the left, you see some examples. So you can see with electric cars, for example, they can charge or even feed back into the grid at various times. If you can control this, this is a great opportunity for flexibility. But also you can think of um, a cooling cell. If you have uh, like these huge industrial refrigerators for vegetables, uh, keeping them uh, uh, cool, for example. Of course, they have to remain in a certain temperature bound, but within that, you have some, some wiggle room to adjust and uh, adjust the, the amount of uh, energy consumption. Now, this, this, this wiggle room can be um, considered flexibility, and you can put a market around that. Now, here there's multiple uh, reasons why you want to work with flexibility for uh, various causes. And our uh, use case as a, a distribution system operator is to focus on constraint management. And we can do so without touching the other uh, market acts that are already in place. And so the, the real principle here is to consider flexibility separate from other market mechanisms. 
Now here's an example where you see we have a cable that is typically overloaded. There's oftentimes there's a congestion uh, uh, happening there. In, in Shapeshift, this is called a congestion point. And this is addressed, right? We had a, a calculation from a, a power grid model that says, here we have an issue, we need to resolve it. What we can do is on both sides of this congestion point, trying to create an incentive, a financial incentive through this flexibility market to on the one hand create demand and the other hand create supply. Then on both sides, the local balance changes and there's less need to transport energy across that congestion uh, management. If there is then a difference uh, financially uh, that is compensated uh, for, and that is sort of the price to actually uh, resolve this congestion. The main thing um, here is that they balance out, or at least they, they can balance out, so that, for example, the transmission system operator who looks at a higher level to maintain balance in the grid is not affected. They see a net zero, oh, there's nothing, it's just the DSO shifting the load a bit. Uh, but this is a great resolver for this active congestion. Now, Shapeshifter goes across a couple of steps, contract, plan, validate, operate, and settle. And the main thing you think of with active congestion management is happening in the validate phase. This is where all the trading is happening and, and the predictions are updated and new trades are coming in. The rest, before that, the contract and the plan are really to set up and identify congestion points, identify uh, possible partners that can help as aggregators, and then operate this during the process within the time bound where the congestion is mitigated, it's live, uh, there might still be updates or uh, a, a live a need for additional uh, uh, changes that is done there. And finally, the settle to make sure that all the balances match out and the payment is, uh, is, is secured. And all the while, PowerGit model and OpenStaff can really help during that validate phase to make that possible. Here you see an example um, of all these, these uh, messages of flex requests and flex orders coming in, or continuous evaluation. This is like it were happening in that uh, validate phase. And so you see that OpenStaff is crucial for the forecast and PowerGit model is crucial to evaluate if these offers come in. Would they resolve it? Uh, do we need to maybe uh, adjust something? So it's a continuous uh, iterative process and we need the other tools to, to make this work. Now, Shapeshifter, as I said, is, a, is a, a standard with a couple of libraries and it's really neutral about how it's implemented. So on the one hand, you can have every di uh, distribution system operator dealing with every aggregator that is there, say uh, a, an operator of uh, EV charging points and with, um, uh, with all the balanced responsible parties for the electricity market. Or you could even centralize it, uh, which might be more efficient. But of course, there has to be a legal framework in place. There has to be some buy-in to enable that. Uh, that doesn't really matter. And Shapeshifter brings a mature specification because there have been, uh, I'll show, uh, multiple uh, implementations in the field that are continuously working on improving the specification to be more clear and uh, more easy to implement. There's a community of practice with how do you put this in practice um, and um, recommendations. And I said, uh, there's a library in Java and Python to, to get you started. These are the two projects that are doing this now in the wild. And we get a lot of experience from that, refining Shapeshifter as the protocol in the libraries. Uh, the Fusion uh, project in the United K Kingdom and uh, uh, GoPax in the Netherlands. And so you see, as a result of that, that we have uh, already quite a substantial community of grid operators uh, uh, working on this, but also consultancy company, DMVGL, GridImp. And um, a funny thing is that uh, uh, SP Energy Networks from Scottish Power, working in the UK, is uh, actually owned by uh, Iberdrola. Maybe you recognize the three uh, leaves. They're also here with the giant building here in uh, Bilbao, and you see them all over the streets. So. There's also a Bilbao uh, tint to that, and uh, who knows, maybe here in Spain there will be uh, another Shapeshifter project. Now, if you want to know more about Shapeshifter and uh, the active community uh, that has been there already uh, qu since quite some time, here you see some of the people, and um, as we got more people coming in, I, I just added a couple of down, um, there might be even more to mention. And you can reach them, uh, of course, on GitHub, on the website. And we also have a, um, an online documentation you can view um, about the protocol with all the diagrams there and that should be a good explainer. And then I'll give it back to Jonas about LF Energy. Thank you, Nico.
So I also want to mention that all the three projects that we just introduced, OpenStep, BioGrid Model, and Shapeshifter, are hosted under the umbrella of Linux Foundation Energy. And to just recap, Linux Aleph Energy is an open source foundation for the power system sector, hosted within the Linux Foundation. And the mission of Aleph Energy is to provide a neutral, collaborative community to build shared digital investments around energy. So how does Aleph Energy particularly help us, but also the OpenStep, PowerGrid model, and Shapeshifter projects in particular? And the four things that really stand out for us. First, Aleph Energy provides us with a neutral ecosystem and open go governance to host open source projects and collaborate with organizations within and outside the energy sector. Second, Aleph Energy provides us also with the know-how, how to best leverage and adopt open source best practices and practices around community management. And third, Aleph Energy also helps us with IP and legal related questions. And fourth, maybe even most importantly, Aleph Energy is also a great network organization to get in touch with other organizations working in the energy space and also interested in the open source domain as well. And we see that Aleph Energy has grown a lot in the last few years. Aleph Energy currently hosts 20 projects with many more in the pipeline. And this includes projects in the application domain like OpenStep, but also projects in the edge domain like Flash Power. And today, Aleph Energy has over 50 members. And this includes distribution system operators and transmission system operators like Aliander, RTE, Tenet, Stopnet, EnergyNet, but also universities and large corporates like Microsoft, Google, GE, and Shell. And this creates a very diverse and valuable community. And I also want to highlight three reports that has recently published and created in collaboration with Linux Foundation Research where you can learn more about the developments that are happening in the energy space, in particular, how open source plays a role in these developments. And I, will, I don't have the time to go into them in detail, but if you want to read them and download them, you can use the QR code on this slide. And this brings us to the end of our presentation. And today we have talked about the challenges we as distribution system operators are facing and we talked about the importance open source plays in Aliena's digitalization ambitions. We introduced the open so source projects OpenSAF, PowerGrid Model and Shapeshifter and talked about how these projects in particular help Aliena to integrate more renewable energy in the electricity grid. Also, we give you some insight in how Linux Foundation Energy is helping us to grow these projects further. And I also want to highlight today and take this moment to, sh to also address the importance of these innovations. Because I believe that energy and moving to more renewable energy is not only key for the energy, energy sector itself, but for all sectors. And I hope that this story can inspire you as well. Because I really believe that if we bring the great minds and the power of the crowd together, we can build great innovative solutions, which will help us and the world to move to a more decarbonized world. And if you want to get to know more about our open source efforts or the open source efforts within the Linux Foundation Energy, please reach out to us or one, check out one of the links presented on this slide. And I hope that we still have some time for some questions and discussions before we have to hand it over for the next presentation. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah.
Um, and uh, you also mentioned the use of liquidate, so there is one way to provide that extra boost. Um, do you see, uh, what's your perspective on, um, on uh, let's say, consumer electronic devices to take, for example, a, a household where you have an AC unit that, that consumes a lot of electricity, but it's not like time critical, it does not have to work at a certain time. Yep. Do you see there uh, something that, uh, for a project, or are there any initiatives within the Linux Foundation that basically work on, on um, controlling that part of the... Yeah. I, I can I can answer. Let me repeat the question for uh, online viewers. Um, basically, what projects are there, uh, especially for the consumer side, people, households, they also have flexibility, right? AC, uh, vehicle to grid uh, with uh, electric vehicles. What opportunities are there to leverage that flexibility rather than uh, businesses which have, yeah, uh, more uh, opportunity to integrate in these uh, pilot projects? As far as I know, there is not really anything going on at the moment. Uh, ideally, it would sound to say uh, we need uh, uh, open standards to get something off the ground. But I think, uh, talking about Shapeshifter, we talk about uh, aggregators having a giant role here. So you see uh, some equipment manufacturers, say boiler producers, uh, experimenting with the idea of making them uh, internet connected and controllable. So you get, uh, maybe also for your car, you get a car and the uh, car manufacturer or the charging point uh, manufacturer has the ability to control it uh, for you and sort of uh, uh, deal with the flexibility trade. What I personally would really like to see is to enable uh, households to take that into their own hands through automation, through protocols. Um, you see a lot of things happening with, uh, with home automation. You see a lot of energy division coming on with the uh, home assistant, for example, getting uh, that connected to uh, whether or not to aggregators or directly uh, to this flexibility uh, uh, trade, I think would be really beneficial and would also help us as a grid operator, uh, especially in, in the neighborhoods, because um, talking to uh, industrial parks and, and managing it there is quite different than uh, actual neighborhoods. Yes, Adam. And it's very interesting you mentioned that. You see also Netherlands uh, dynamic contracts are coming up. And uh, we as a distribution system are really happy because then you create also the incentivize to shift your load, also for consumers. So in Netherlands even, is the pricing is uh, changing on an hourly basis. So, and there are particular even moments in time, especially on Sundays when there's a lot of uh, wind production, that consumers can even retrieve money by consuming energy, which sounds strange. Uh, but that is really interesting. If you have an electric car, you can charge your car and even make money out of it. And for us, that's great because it's shifting the load to the peak. And for the customer, it's great as well uh, because uh, that will save them a lot of money. And I think there's also a huge opportunity to, to make it more easy for customers. Uh, nowadays, it really depends on the technical abilities of the customer itself to get this uh, up and running. And it would be, I think there's a great opportunity for, for, for uh, making that more customer friendly and more automated. Uh, so uh, that happens automatically. <coughs> Yeah, that's a really uh, good point to make. So uh, uh, for us as a grid company, it's important that we guarantee grid safety at all times. And uh, especially with 
uh, forecast model, but other machine learning is always, uh, yeah, they're never 100% true. So there's always a margin of, of, of error you have to take into account. And uh, for us in making sure that safety grid, uh, grid safety is analyzed, we make sure that there's enough, enough space to guarantee the safe marshes. But what we want to do, and we hope to improve those models uh, to get more reliable in the future, that we can, uh, how do you say in English, blow sharper to the wind, or uh, I'm not sure if that translates yeah, well. But closer to the edge, maybe. Uh, closer to the edge, so I think that's a better pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, so there's not a huge opportunity there, uh, but it's something you have to keep in mind and, uh, and be aware of. Yeah, and, and one thing to add for the example we just gave, uh, right, in, 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 in Shapeshifter, there's also already a mechanism to cope with that. So we have the operate phase, and if, say, the predictions were uh, too optimistic, there's still the opportunity to act live and uh, control with the market to mitigate it regardless. So there is some safety uh, system already in, in the protocol. Yes, question in the back. Yeah, so yes and no. So we, d for example, the shapeshifter uh, came into existence because there was no particular standard in that uh, particular domain. And also the reasons why we make this standard openly available and we hope uh, to bring this uh, uh, standard also to, on the long run, to a more international standard. So we're really happy to see that it is also adopted in the UK. So uh, it's, it's gonna be a broader adoption. Furthermore, we use uh, internally also a lot of standards already uh, heavily uh, used in the energy sector. Uh, examples are uh, ISIM uh, standard, which also a lot of our open source projects rely on, uh, and many other standards like OpenADR, uh, there's a project we don't, didn't talk about today, uh, that's a particular focus on that standard. So I think and I believe that open standards are also a key enabler of of the energy transition, but also particular important for the open source projects. Okay, that brings us to the end. Oh, thank you very much for your for attendance and for your questions.